This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Provide more support for MSP teams by keeping their skills up to date in all aspects of IT, including MS Cloud, AWS, CompTIA, and so much more. Twitter listeners will receive at least 20% off or as much as 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. The discount is based on the size of your team when you fill out their form. My favorite feature about the Final Cut on the iPad is the Soundtracks tab. It has all this built-in music that is really good. Like it's it's really good music. And one of the coolest things about it is we can add a song to it. So I'm just going to add this first one right here. And you can kind of see it's not very long of a clip. Um, but you can take this clip and unlike any other music track or music service I've ever used, you can just drag it and see how if you're watching the video, you can see how it's empties. That basically means in the timeline, nothing would be playing. There's no audio there. I'm going to go ahead and release it. Give it just a second here. And now. And now there we go. OK, it auto fills and auto generates the music track to make it the length that you want it to be. You can make it as short as you want it to be. You can make it as long as you want it to be. And dear listener, I cannot tell you how much time I have spent trying to make a short audio track work for a long clip where you're like trying to find that right beat where to cut and splice the two tracks together. This you literally just drag it and it figures it out for itself. And you cannot tell at all. It is so unbelievably good. I love this feature in Final Cut. It, it saves me so much time. That is very useful. And this is one of those things where people who are trying to create videos will often run into, you know, the block of it's not so much that you need to be great at uh, being, uh, you know, a video uh, personality, for example, if you are doing something like Chris's videos on YouTube, where, you know, you're talking about things and showing them off, you don't just need to know your stuff and be good on video, you also need to know how to record it and how to do music and how to do all the editing and so on. And creating music is a very different skill set to creating videos. And, you know, there's definitely overlap in there. But just like you said, uh, Chris, you know, you're not a graphic designer, you don't, you know, necessarily have um you know the the skills or you know want to develop the skills to do fancy you know animated intro uh, intro uh title screens but the fact mm -hmm. that that's all there is is really lovely and of course you know you can also import things from elsewhere so if somebody else makes one for you then you can use that you could use kino um, and export kino as a video and import that into final cut so that you can like use that as an intro slide if you wanted to if you do want to add your own stuff and i really love the way that things work as well you know you can also i think you can even directly record video into final cut on your ipad right using the ipad yes. uh, uh cameras yeah, so there are some features in Final Cut for iPad that are specific to that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the video camera icon up at the top, and hopefully this doesn't crash. Okay, hey, it worked. And you can see the backside of my desk uh, because that's where it is. But you can film all sorts of different stuff in here, and this will go directly into your project. Uh, you have setting features. You have autofocus controls, manual focus. Um, you have... Uh, uh, frame rate controls, you have resolution controls, exposure, all sorts of different things. You can even film slow-mo clips right in here as well. So you can film it without even going into the camera app. Uh, now I'm gonna switch that. Now another iPad specific feature is this scrub wheel right here. This is really cool for those that are editing without a keyboard and mouse or trackpad. This feature right here brings up this little um, scrub option and final cut crash this is why you don't put developer betas on your ipads people mm -hmm. all right there <laughs> we go now we're back into it so uh bringing up the scrub reel hopefully it won't crash this time and there you can scrub through your timeline you can do it kind of slowly or you can do it really fast and you can scrub to the point that you want uh anywhere which is really cool. Like, I love this feature. I, I really want Apple to make a physical scrub wheel so I can pair it with the Mac or the iPad and like have a physical that I think that would be really cool. But, uh, but when you can also take a clip, if you have a clip selected, you will see this option appears down here where this one selected, this will scrub the timeline header. This right here, the nut, if you switch to nudge, this will move the clip. So if you, you can move it just by a couple frames or you can move it really fast or it moves it by seconds or minutes. 
but yeah, you can nudge clips so that way you can get them precisely where you want, which is really nice when you're when you're in like a touch mode in Final Cut because we have these big old meaty finger hands. They're not very precise. This allows you to get precise. And when it comes to video editing, you need to be precise. The last feature that that's iPad specific that is probably like the biggest thing is you can use the Apple Pencil to create animations. Now, I am horrible at this. Uh, this is why you don't see me do this a lot. But uh, I am going to take this bit right here and I will draw an arrow on my R2C4 unit and say, hi, how are you? OK, that's terrible. But what you can do with that is now we will come back here. And it should animate. So you can create animations. And let me tell you, back in my film school days, I used to do this stuff in After Effects. Like this was kind of my specialty to create like these hand animation things like this that make it look like stuff was hand drawn on screen. That stuff used to take days to make. I just did that in, I don't even know, like five seconds, 10 seconds. That's that's wild. Now, it looks terrible because I have horrible handwriting. But uh, if you have decent handwriting, you can create really nice animations right on top of your video. And it just creates it as another clip and you can retime it and all that stuff. You can you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can pull up this inspector pane right here uh, and you can change how long it takes to draw on. Uh, you can make it faster. You can make it longer, whatever you want. Uh, but this feature right here, uh, people that do this, I cannot underline how much time this saves you over the traditional way of doing this kind of thing where you're doing uh, all sorts of just wild things with masks and stuff like that. Um, this this is really, really cool. Yeah, that is fabulous. And uh, yeah, as it turns out, Chris, I may actually have a little recommendation for you after the show on a scrap wheel oh. for your Mac. Uh, I have one right here, um, which is oh. uh, something I've been playing with. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. Is there any uh, final little uh, tip or piece of advice or comment that you would like to make on Final Cut Pro? Yeah, just when it comes to time to export, there's a share button right here at the top. Uh, you can export as different kind of things. There's video, audio only, current frame, which will just give you a JPEG or PNG. I don't remember which one it is off the top of my head of the current frame that you're on. Or there is this option to export as Final Cut Pro project for the iPad. This right here is, allows you to create a backup of your project or excuse me, or allows you to take it and move it over to the Mac. So say you do want to get some more advanced stuff. This will take this project, including that hand-drawn animation we did, and move it over to the Mac so you can get a, even even more into things. Um, so there have been videos that I have cut up on my iPad, but because of the color grading issues that I talked about previously, I would cut it up on my iPad and then move it over to the Mac and color grade it. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a way first party wise to take a Final Cut project from the Mac and move it back to the iPad. There is a open source project going around that that does allow you to do this, but I've had a few issues with it, so I wouldn't rely on it. But uh, when it comes time to export, most of the stuff that you're going to do is you're just going to select video. You can pick from the different options. If you're uploading to YouTube, there is a social platform option right there that is perfect. Export. Boom. Bob's your uncle. You can upload to YouTube. And one of my favorite things that came in the last couple of years, I believe it was iPad OS 14. Rose, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was Desktop Class Safari. And with that, you were mm -hmm. actually able to upload right to YouTube from your iPad. No longer have to use the YouTube app, which is limited to 1080p. Uh, so that was that was a big, big relief. So you can have a whole YouTube editing workflow right on your iPad. Uh, the color grading stuff, don't stress about it, especially if you're just shooting with an iPhone or something like that, or if you're not worried about log profiles, you don't need to stress about those issues. Um, if I was starting off with my YouTube channel today, this is absolutely 100% the piece of software I would use for everything uh, because it has everything I need. Uh, I've just grown and, and done some more I don't want to say advanced stuff, but I've done some stuff that's not exactly necessary, but I did it anyway. So uh, that this this really allows me to um, 
push my push my what I can do. Um, but because Final Cut is on the iPad now, and with some changes in iPad OS 17 and iPad OS 16, I no longer need a MacBook. I sold my MacBook Pro. The iPad is my only portable computer now. It's what I work from every single day. And then when I have big video projects, I fall back to a Mac Studio. 